Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. One of our community members sent me this article that was just published yesterday, so I thought I'd go over it with you all. Now ladies and gentlemen, this article is going to cover what the UN is warning about. So take it with a grain of salt. I personally don't think that the UN is for right about everything that they put out there. However, having skimmed through this article, it makes sense as to what they are saying about famines of biblical proportions happening in 2021 due to this health crisis. This health crisis has really hurt the food production industry, as many of you, I'm sure, are aware of. So let's go ahead and read this real quick and see what they have to say. The title is, Famines of Biblical Proportions Feared in 2021 Amid This Health Crisis. UN Food Agency warns. The head of the World Food Program says the Nobel Peace Prize has given the UN agency a spotlight and megaphone to warn world leaders that next year is going to be worse than this year. And without billions of dollars, we are going to have famines of biblical proportions in 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, like the Ice Age Farmer says, you can print fiat currency, but you can't print food. So I don't know what is going to help with billions of dollars being given to the UN so that they can avert a food crisis and or a famine. David Beasley said in an interview with the AP that the Norwegian Noble Committee was looking at the work the agency does every day in conflicts, disasters, and refugee camps often putting staffers' lives at risk to feed millions of hungry people, but also sends a message to the world that it's getting worse out there and that our hardest work is yet to come. It was so timely because we've been fighting to get above the choir, Beasley said, of last month's award, pointing to the news being dominated by the U.S. elections and the health crisis and the difficulty of getting global attention focused on the travesty that we're facing around the world. So the famine that they're speaking of is not within the U.S., ladies and gentlemen. However, I've often mentioned that what happens in other countries also affects us, as does other nations as well. Beasley recalled his warning to the U.N. Secretary Council in April that as the world was dealing with with this health crisis, it was also on the brink of a hunger pandemic that could lead to multiple famines of biblical proportions. Within a few months, immediate action was taken. And if you all remember, ladies and gentlemen, a, a month or two ago, I put up a video where a congressman of the United States of America stated on the Congress floor that if we did not help our farmers, that we would have a major food shortage here in the United States. We were able to avert it in 2020 because the world leaders responded with money, stimulus packages, deferral of debt, he said. Now Beasley said this health crisis is surging again. Economies are continuing to deteriorate, particularly in low and middle income countries, and there is another wave of lockdowns and shutdowns. But he said the money that was available in 2020 isn't going to be available in 2021, so he has been using the Nobel to meet leaders virtually and in person to talk to parliaments and get speeches to sensitize those with power to this tragedy that we are facing. Crises that really are going to be extraordinary over the next, who knows, 12 to 18 months. Everybody now wants to meet with Nobel Prize winner, Beasley said, explaining he now gets 45 minutes instead of 15 with leaders and is able to go into death and explain how bad things are going to be next year and how leaders are going to have to prioritize programs. And the response has really been good, he said. I'm telling them you're not going to have enough money to fund all the projects you historically fund, he said. Those are important things, Beasley said. But he likened the upcoming crisis to the Titanic, saying right now we really need to focus on icebergs, and icebergs are famine, starvation, destabilization, and migration. So I'm sure, ladies and gentlemen, that a lot of the, you know, first world countries are probably wanting to contribute to this because they don't want 
the third world countries immigrating to their countries because they are starving. And in all actuality, can you really blame someone that's in a third world country who's starving, who wants to go somewhere else? I mean, some people may say yes or no, but a lot of these people don't have a say in what their governments make them do. They are just pawns, as are we. In April, Beasley said 135 million people face crisis levels of hunger or worse. A WFP analysis then showed that this health crisis could push an additional 130 million people to the brink of starvation by the end of 2020. He said in Wednesday's virtual interview from Rome, where WFP is based, that while famine was averted this year, the number of people facing crisis levels of hunger is increasing towards 270 million people. There are about three dozen countries that could possibly enter the famine conditions if we don't have the money we need, Beasley said. Again, ladies and gentlemen, money is not going to fix this problem, maybe in the short term, but not in the long term. That's my opinion. According to a joint analysis by WFP and the UN Food and Agriculture Organization in October 20, countries are likely to face potential spikes in high acute food insecurity in the next three to six months and require urgent attention. And these are the countries here that he's talking about, and these are other countries that need urgent attention as well. Beasley said that the miracle cure to this health crisis will create some optimism that hopefully will help jump the economies around the world, particularly the Western economies. But the WFP executive director said there's already been $17 billion of economic stimulus this year, and we're not going to have that globally. We are very concerned that with deferred debt payments for low and middle income countries resuming in January, New lockdowns and the rippling economic impact, 2021 is going to be a very bad year, Beasley said. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in reference to all of these problems occurring because of this, I am going to go ahead and be putting up a video on my Patreon page that covers some of this. So if you guys would like to join in on Patreon, you can do it for as little as a dollar a month because... There is a lot of information out there that I get from community members, and I like to share it in any way that I can. So if you guys uh, would like to jump in there, the link to my Patreon channel is below the description of my video. Now, ladies and gentlemen, nothing in this article said anything about the United States going into some kind of a food shortage. Of course, we already know that we've been through a kind of a food shortage earlier this year because of the transportation system and things related to this health crisis. However, if you take a look at all of the mishaps that we had last year and early this year in our food production, as I've covered in my live stream this last Sunday, you know, we lost a lot of cattle due to floods. We lost a lot of pigs. We lost millions of chickens. And uh, those losses that we had earlier this year and late last year, they will start to show their faces, I believe, early next year. Because normally, a country has about a year's worth of food stuff in reserve. So, for example, right now we may still be eating off of last year's beans. But last year's bean harvest, as many of you saw, was dismal. So that means that next year, when we start eating off of the beans that were produced this year, they may become less available and more expensive. And that goes for pretty much any other food stuff that we consume. Usually we have a buffer that we are always about a year ahead or a year behind what we've produced. And what we produce this year will not start showing its face till next year, probably midway through the year, it'll start showing its face in a real way as far as shortages and as far as price increases go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, I hope you got something out of this. I'm going to go ahead and leave the link to this article at the bottom of the description of the video. Thank you very much to the community member that sent me this article. Uh, I appreciate it. So thank you. Having said that, have a great day today. Have a great week ahead. Have several videos coming out this week. I also have a live stream this evening 
I'll go ahead and leave the link to that live stream uh, up on my community page and I'll also put it up on Patreon and on my Facebook page as well if you guys would like to support the channel and join on in. All right, having said that, have a great day. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper. I am out.